Hi, I'm Alexandria. And I'm Crystal. And we met practicing yoga together, something that we love a whole, whole lot. But we're not here to talk about yoga. We're here to talk about oxygen depletion <laughs> and what you can do about it. <laughs> It's, it's, it's really a pretty serious thing. Um, so the quality of your breath can be directly correlated to the quality of your life moment to moment. For example, a rabbit on average can take anywhere between 30 to 60 breaths per minute. So even just now as I've stepped up on this stage, I can feel my breath <laughs> has already picked up versus when we were just off the stage. And in order for me to like savor this moment and really enjoy it, like with my friend Crystal and with the audience, anyone watching, is to take a breath. So turtles, on the other hand, on average take like four breaths per minute. I can live anywhere up to like 150 years old. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Definitely. And so as Alex said, just like naturally, as we stepped on the stage, my breath started to pick up, like I could feel it in my chest. So a normal reaction, but I want to tell you about a time, a story, recently um, when I was able to shift that, and the impact that it had not just on me, but on another person. So yoga teacher by night, and high school psychology teacher by day. I also do some instructional coaching at the high school that I work for, I really love my work and really love working with teenagers. So I'm one of those odd people that just loves teenagers. <laughs> and so I'll take you back to last fall. School had been in session for about a month. We had an amazing lesson. Uh, the kids were really hyped up. Most of them mastered the objective. Um, and they're filing out of class, and I'm telling them all to have a great day. And my colleague starts to enter my room. We had planned to sit down and reflect on how each other's lessons had went and plan some next steps. And as he starts to enter the room, I hear some screaming out in the hall. Wait a second. I hear some more screaming. Sometimes it's just teenagers. They just like to scream. So I hear some more, and this is definitely like a scream that something is not right. So I turn to my colleague, and I say, we've got to get out in the hall right now. So we walk outside my classroom door, and we see two girls are in a really intense fight. Like, there's already some damage being done, and there are students starting to circle around them. And I see some of their friends start to circle around them. And what's going through my mind at this point is this is about to turn into a really bad deal. He and I are the only, we're the only folks in the hall at this time. And so we start yelling for help, and we start stepping toward the fight. At that moment, I start to think, like, what are my options? What am I going to do here? While I'm standing there, catching my breath, thinking, he's already jumped in. Another teacher has came around the corner, and he started to jump in. And I'll leave you there for a second, because that's where I actually had to remain for a second. I took myself back to what I had been learning. At the time, I was going through yoga teacher training. So I was learning how to instruct others um, in a passion, something that's really had a huge impact on my life. And in that teacher training, a lot of focus in the beginning was on the breath. And I had been practicing for a couple of years, and I'd heard about the breath, and honestly, I thought it just sounded kind of new agey and silly. <laughs> so my yoga teachers would say, breathe into your back body. And I would think, breathe into your what? <laughs> Does that exist? <laughs> but as I progressed <laughs> through the teacher training, I realized, hey, this is legit. Like I can actually enhance my physical practice and also calm my mind through this idea of the breath. That breath can shift shift my focus, shift my thinking. And so flashback to that moment in the hall when I was taking a step into the circle 
of these girls, beautiful girls, engaged in this really awful fight. What am I going to do? Find my breath. And so as I step forward, I find my breath and take a really deep breath. And I look to the third girl who was literally like making a decision to step into the fight at that moment. And I walk up behind her and I put my arms around her and hold her securely. And then I take a breath. And I take another breath. And I press the side of my face just gently against the side of her face. And I tell her, it's going to be okay. We're going to step out of this. And I continue to breathe. And then I start to step back, just slowly. And continuing to breathe with her, I start to notice that she's breathing with me. And I start to feel her body relax with my body. And continue to step back, taking my time. I also notice every time I look up from her, and I look at the fight, and I look at the other two teachers, who, by the way, are having no success at this point in breaking up the fight. They're actually a part of it now. <laughs> They're getting injured. Sorry, guys, when you see this. And we actually step back together and keep our focus on one another. We stand on the other side of the hallway while the fight ensues. And by the end of the fight, I've let go of holding her like this. And I'm actually just gently holding her wrist like you would a friend. I'm still talking to her gently. And I'm still breathing with her. And I'm working to calm myself down and so that I can help her. And I'm thanking her for being there with me and making a decision to shift in that moment. So fast forward to today. It's actually probably about 30 minutes after I was talking to Alexandria about tonight. And I pass her in the hall. And we do our usual, hey, smile. We have a connection, this girl and I. And we have a connection, I think, because that day that we both made a decision to shift together, and we both learned a lot about ourselves together, and we also formed a bond in a situation that was pretty traumatic for several people that day. And we found a way to shift and find stillness and calmness in that. So what Crystal is speaking to is something we as yoga teachers talk about a lot, which is the difference between your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system. So your sympathetic nervous system is typically on pretty high alert most times. Um, it's something that we've had for thousands of years. So you can think back to um, when we were all like living in caves, and at any point in time there could have been like a tiger or a lion coming around the corner, and we would either choose to flee the scene, to freeze, or to fight. And they're like instinctual actions that come up within us. So similar to uh, a hallway fight, that, that kind of energy that comes with that, where your body almost takes over, that's your sympathetic nervous system working. And we need it um, day to day to a certain extent, but the way that our society has evolved, we need it much less than we used to. So now we get to spend parts of our day, if you choose so, to go to yoga and work on tapping into your parasympathetic nervous system, which is that of relaxation and calming and ease. And there's some qualities that, that people like in their lives. And... Um, they're qualities that, that can allow us to shift. So in order to uh, create that, you can do yoga, you could do breath work, you could do um, just a, a, a simple meditation, a calming yoga poses um, specifically designed for relaxation. 
But let's look at um, just creating with the breath. That's right. So we'll sit with you guys. And I'll ask you to sit up tall in your chairs as we have um, a rib cage, right, that holds our lungs up. And if we sit taller and use a tall spine, you'll be able to breathe a little more freely. So we'll talk about something called sama vritti, which in uh, Sanskrit is just kind of same and even breath. So wherever you are, just take a steady inhale. And then exhale. And then we'll work to count the breath. So you'll take a steady inhale for four, three, two, and one. And then exhale for four, three, two, and one. Push all the breath out. And then close your mouth if you can. Just breathe in through your nose. Take a big inhale for four, three, two, and one. Pause. And exhale for three, two, and one. And one, push all the air out. And once more, slow and steady. Big inhale for four, three, two, and one. Feel full and pause. And exhale, four, three, two, and one. Try to push all the breath out. Now, if you can, close your eyes. If you're at home, close your eyes watching this, wherever you are. And then try it again. Steady inhale for four. Three, two, and one, pause, and exhale, four, three, two, one, get all the breath out, and then go again, your count, you count, count to four, and then pause, and then count it again, and let yourself go at your speed, once more. Can you create it? And then when you're done, you can open your eyes. So I don't know about you, but I have no desire to be in a hallway fight right now. (laughs) (laughs) Nor break up one. (laughs) So... We'd like to close with a challenge. And hopefully none of you will be involved in a fight tomorrow. Um, (laughs) But we would like to challenge you to use your breath as an anchor and to shift in a way to create what you wanted to create. And so in that moment, I wanted to create calmness with this beautiful young girl Maybe tonight when you get home to your families and there's something that you want to create and it's not really going your way, take a deep breath. When you return to work on Monday, maybe something's not going the way you expected, and take a deep breath. Use your breath as an anchor. Shift your mind and your actions to create what you want to create. And practice lots of yoga. Of course. (laughs) Thanks, guys. Thank you.